Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we are going to be doing some maintenance on the old 60 horse Mercury, the four stroke. Uh, we're going to change the oil and then we're also going to change the gear loop and the lower end. So stay tuned so you don't miss any tips or tricks that I might show you. You're going to need four quarts of Quicksilver 25W40 marine engine oil. Quicksilver is recommended by Mercury. They're actually the same manufacturer. Um, it only takes three and a, three quarts and a little bit, but uh, you need four. You need a 18 millimeter uh, socket, a pair of pliers, and also something to get your oil in. And lastly, you'll need some rags. So uh, the procedure here will be the same for 40, 50, and 60 horse uh, four-stroke engines. This one is particularly a 2011 model. Um, I believe it's still the same procedure all the way through. So. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is take out the engine cowling. So simply pull the handle here, and it rotates forward. Take it off and lay it on the back of the bed. Or Back deck of the boat. Let's see, back of the boat. Wow, that's crazy. All right, uh, this thing is typically pretty hard to get off. I already broke it loose earlier, so that's why you need a pair of pliers. And just grab onto it, break it loose. This uh, this breaks the, the vacuum on your engine casing. Otherwise, it's going to take forever to change the oil out. And off to the next step. All right, see how I have my engine uh, turned this way? Uh, like I'm turning left in the boat. So that is so I can not have to use a tube to drain the oil to the pan. Um, so it's got a little spout here, I'll show you in a second. We're gonna tilt it up a little bit, it's gonna be a little loud. Okay, that gives me clearance to get the pan underneath. It also won't let any of the oil uh, drain down the foot and down and make a big mess. Okay, so this is what I was talking about here. Um, it's tilted so it won't drip on the foot. This is out further than this. I'm gonna put the pan underneath it. I'm gonna pull the plug here on this one. Uh, we'll leave it right there for now. Then open that up so I can breathe. And then we're gonna take our wrench and we're gonna break this loose. I didn't check to see, okay. I'm gonna break it loose. Okay. I recommend the half inch drive because uh, you can put a lot more torque on it. And now I'm gonna to pull this out because it's gonna drip way further out in the beginning, you guys will see. And see how none of it's getting on the side of the motor. It's just tripping on down here, all the way to the pan. Okay, we're gonna let that drain out, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started on the oil filter. And uh, I got a little oil on my hands. That's why you need the rags. Keep you from wiping it on your clothes. Okay, there's a good view of the oil filter. Now, uh, I think in the later models, they have a, a cup here that catches residual oil when you unscrew it. This one does not. I have to uh, stuff a rag underneath there to catch all the residual oil. Not too big of a deal, a little bit of a pain, but you know, if you've ever changed oil in anything, it typically gets on something. So once we get it pulled out, we'll clean, clean back there pretty good and then uh, then we'll, before we reinstall the new one, we'll, we'll clean it up pretty good. Let's see if we get it broke loose. Nope. So I don't have an oil filter wrench, but I do have a large pair of channel locks. So let's see if we can break this loose with a pair of channel locks. Yep. So we got it broke loose. 
This should be able to get us off. Oh yeah, we're good. So a little, little improvisation there. Uh, I put good pair of channel locks. These old filters aren't very big. You can use a pair of channel locks to well, break it loose. All right, so I'm gonna take this off fairly quickly. So we don't get oil everywhere. Okay. Not a whole lot of oil came out, so we're in pretty good shape. Just doing a little inspection to see if there's anything weird going on. You know, this is a good opportunity uh, while you've got the cowling off and you're looking around at things to do a good general inspection. I'm looking at the timing belt here. It goes through the cam. Uh, looks like the teeth on the starter look pretty good. I don't see anything broken there. You know, just do a good general overview of what's under the cowling. You know, all my spark plug wires look good. Not seeing a whole lot of dirt, grime, or maybe even leaking oil anywhere. So we're in pretty good shape. So the, uh, the 40, 50, and 60s, uh, depending on your serial number, um, use certain oil filters this is the one for my 60 horse yours may not be the same so always double check so i'm gonna pop this open so right now there's no nothing lubricating the seal here so my, i'm gonna get some of the residual oil off the old filter and i'm just gonna go around it that way the seal doesn't get in a bond as I tighten it down. Let's screw it on real quick. The reason this one's white is it's the Quicksilver version. The, other, the black one is a Mercury Marine part. This one is a Quicksilver. They're essentially the same manufacturer. Still recommended by Mercury. So this one's just white. So, all right. You want to put a good half turn on there, and you're done with the oil filter. Uh, this is right here is where we check the oil, the dipstick. Uh, right now, putting the oil in it. So now it's time to put the plug back in and put some oil in this thing. All right. Got the plug here. We're just gonna do a general wipe off on it. Not nothing major. And we'll look at the seal here in a second. Make sure it looks good. Yeah, I don't see any damage on the seal. We look pretty good there. Just clean off some of the oil on the outside. Clean off this part. Oh, you guys can't see what I'm doing. Let's try this again. All we're doing is cleaning the oil in the little spout in your area. Can't really get to it after you put the plug in. It's got this rag here. Hang the rag up. And then just, we're just gonna hand tighten it for now. Then we're gonna wrench on it. All right, finger tight. Grab our 18 millimeter socket. We're gonna put a pretty good bit on it. There you go. Nothing overly tight. Just put a good wrenching on it. There you go. And then we're done with the draining of the oil. We've already got the new oil filter installed. I'm gonna do a little more wipe down here. And uh, yeah. Now all we got left is put some oil in it. So I have the motor tilted up. Uh, you don't need a funnel to do this. Um, if you want to, great. But if you have the motor tilted up, the spout here is big enough to accept the bottle. I have a bottle from last year uh, for the little residual that I needed to top it off. So we're gonna use the old first. Uh, as far as I know, these things don't have expiration dates. I'll look real quick. No, nope. I'm just going to use. I'm going to use this one first. I have to use a little out of another bottle. So, real simple. 
Once I have it tilted up, you don't need a filter, or you do need a filter, but you don't need a funnel. So, real simple, you just start pouring it in, and then there you go, just like that. Not too hard, just hold it in there. All right, so we gotta do that two more times, and then uh, I'll lower the motor down, and then we'll put a little, little bit in there and gauge it off with the dipstick test. All right, so when you get ready to check, uh, check the oil level, make sure your engine block is level. Just adjust the trim to where, where it's level. Not a big deal. So I'll wipe the dipstick clean. Uh, there's obviously a range here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a max, and then there's a little little add here. Maybe turn it the other way. So, that's max. This is add. I want to make sure it's in the upper range. Uh, it's about halfway. So we're gonna add just a tad bit more until we get it. Get it right there where I want it, where it's just perfect. All right, so we just put just a tad bit more in there, a couple hundred milliliters. Let's see where we are. Real quick. All right, and it's three quarters of the way between max and the add, so we're gonna call that good. If you're new to fishing, hey, check out some more of my videos. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you know someone who's just getting into fishing, just tell them about my channel. I'll teach you and your friends all about fishing. Until next time, get out there, go catch a fish.